one of Ireland's most famous men, a patriot, politically savvy, a ladies' man. He'll make you laugh, he'll make you cry. No, not the famous Irishman Colin Farrell, the famous Irishman Jonathan Swift. Swift was born in Dublin, Ireland to an Irish father and an English mother. His father died seven months before he was born and his mother returned to England, leaving Jonathan at a very young age to be raised by his uncle. He received his education from Kilkenny College and Dublin University, which is now known as Trinity College, where he also received his bachelor's degree in 1686. He was studying for his master's degree in Ireland when the winds of political change surrounding the Glorious Revolution forced him to return to England in 1688. He took a job as a secretary and personal assistant to the English diplomat Sir William Temple. Swift gained the confidence of his employer and was entrusted with matters of great importance, including interactions with King William III. In 1694, Swift left Temple's employ to become an ordained priest in the Church of Ireland. He became the prebend of Kilroot in the Diocese of Connor. Swift was isolated in a small remote community far from the power base of the city and soon became miserable in his new life. He left the religious life behind and again returned to Temple's employ where he remained until Temple's death in 1699. After Temple's death, he returned to the church as prebend of Dunlavin in St. Patrick's Cathedral in Dublin. This time the religious life suited Swift. In 1702, Swift received his Doctor of Divinity degree from Trinity College. Swift became increasingly active politically during this period of his life as well, especially in matters that affected Ireland, and became a member of the inner circle of the English Tory government. Over the next 10 years, he traveled from Dublin to London frequently and began anonymously publishing political pamphlets. When Queen Anne died and George I took the throne, the power shifted from the Tories to the Whigs. Swift had to leave England for Ireland in virtual exile. Swift returned to writing, especially to the style of writing that he is most famous for, satire. He published his masterpieces, Gulliver's Travel, in 1727. Questions, Your Majesty. Questions. These ministers who run your country, how do they get to be ministers? Well, usually it's a uh, sum of money that decides the issue. And a modest proposal in 1729. In writing a modest proposal, Swift used his favorite literary weapon, irony. When he approached the end of his life, Swift became increasingly consumed with the thoughts of death and in 1731 published his own obituary. In 1745, he died and was laid to rest in the cathedral he had served. His fortune was left to found a hospital for the mentally ill, St. Patrick's Hospital for Imbeciles, which opened in 1757 and still exists as a psychiatric hospital today. As the father of political satire, Swift's influence is still alive today. From comedians like Jon Stewart and Stephen Colbert to television shows like The Simpsons, the use of Swift's brand of satire still makes us laugh and still makes us cry.